Today we're going to discuss management of neonatal opioid withdrawal syndrome. And I'd like to introduce you to the eat, sleep, console concepts and principles of care. Our objectives for today are to become familiar with the ESC protocol, to learn how to use the ESC care tool to perform assessments, and get ready to switch from Finnegan scoring here at our hospital to using the ESC care assessments in the clinical setting. So let's talk about the ESC care method. This method is trending nationwide as the new standard. It's different from Finnegan because it's not based on scoring, a numerical score, but it's rather on the function of the newborn, especially in regards to how well the infant is eating, sleeping, and consoling. And so we would optimize those conditions by trying to support the baby through non-pharmacological treatment interventions by the parent or caregiver and only give medications when the babies are unable to eat, sleep, or console, despite all the comfort measures we are giving them. So what we see here is a picture of the Eat, Sleep, Console care tool that was put together by Boston Medical, Yale, and the Children's Hospital at Dartmouth-Hitchcock. What we've done is integrated this into the Cerner documentation for us, and we're going to follow this model. So, ESC care assessments are really assessing how the baby eats, sleeps, and consoles for the last two to four hours. We will cluster our ESC assessment with our other care so we don't wake up the baby unnecessarily. But our assessment is going to include everything that they did from the last time we did an assessment. So it's not just one point of time in care, but for the last couple hours. Also, it's important that we assess the baby after we have fed the baby, because that's part of the assessment. How did they eat? And it's also important that we have maximized all our comfort measures too. Make sure the baby is being able to manage their withdrawal well. As a reminder, this form is for use only in opioid withdrawal. This is a picture of the newborn care diary which is a form that we put together for parents to use or caregivers at the bedside. And it's just something to help us keep track of infant behaviors. I do want to mention that we want to involve parents and we want them to feel part of the team. We want to encourage them to participate in assessments and this will help them to do that, this form will, because it helps them to record different things that are going on with the baby. Like, how long did they eat? Did they breastfeed? How much did they take in the bottle? Were they fussy? How long did they sleep? Also, as part of our education to parents, we want to talk to them and explain the signs and symptoms of withdrawal and how important it is that they participate in CARES. Also, it would be very kind of us to explain to them the expected course of treatment for the baby, how the baby might respond to different comfort measures they can do, how to use this form, and also some of the definitions of different interventions that are involved with ESC care models, such as huddles, which we will talk about shortly. I'd also like to emphasize that ESC care assessments are not a scoring tool. We do not come up with a score. We don't use the word score. We use the words care assessment. And even when we document in Cerner, it will not generate a score. It will show us the direction we need to go as far as what to do to best support the baby. Now let's talk about each one of these concepts that we're going to be documenting in our care assessment. Eating, sleeping, and consoling. Basically, what we want to do is ask ourselves, first of all, did the baby have any problems with eating? And we would document yes or no. But how would we define if the baby had problems eating? It tells us here some parameters that we can follow. If the baby takes longer than 10 minutes to coordinate feedings, in other words, it takes us that long to get them settled down to where they'll actually latch, 
or if they won't eat for longer than 10 minutes, or if they only take less than 10 milliliters. Then we want to say, yes, they had problems eating. Unless we know for some reason that they had those problems, but it wasn't due to withdrawal. For example, if it's a preemie baby and we wouldn't expect them to be able to eat yet. Or if it's a baby that's spitty in the first 24 hours, which often happens, we want to give them a little time and not record yes, unless we really know that it was for withdrawal. Also, I want to mention that we don't want to place a limit on the duration or volume of the feedings that we're giving for a baby in withdrawal. Infants should be fed as soon as they start to act hungry, as soon as they're giving hunger, hunger cues. We don't want to wait until they're inconsolable and they've lost their state and they're crying and then it's really hard to get them settled down enough to eat again. So we want to be vigilant to pick them up right away, get them eating before they become inconsolable. Also, if we're having troubles with feedings, we have a good resource. And that's our speech language pathologists that we can call on to help us out with troubleshooting issues. So the next concept is sleeping. Did the baby have trouble sleeping? Yes or no? That's all we have to record. But how do we define if the baby had trouble sleeping? Well, if the baby was unable to sleep for at least an hour after the baby fed well, and we know this is due to opioid withdrawal symptoms, then we would say yes, they had trouble sleeping. But we're not going to say yes if they didn't sleep the whole time because we were poking them or because we know mom is a smoker and maybe the baby is irritable the first couple of days or something like that. And we have our last concept, which is consoling. Did the baby have trouble being consoled? Yes or no? How do we define whether they had trouble being consoled? Here they tell us that if the baby took longer than 10 minutes and in our efforts we couldn't console them, or once we got them quiet, they couldn't stay consoled in spite of all of our NPIs or non-pharmacological interventions like tight swaddle, skin to skin with mom, pacifier, feeding them, whatever they needed to console them, rocking, all those nice little tools that we have to use. Also, they have a special note here. Don't indicate yes if the baby didn't console, but it's not due to withdrawal. Maybe it's because nobody picked the baby up. They were too busy in the NICU and there wasn't a parent or a volunteer or caregiver to help us. Or maybe there's some other reason the baby might be fussy. And then, how do we know the baby isn't being consoled? Well, just look at the picture. If the baby is crying, grimacing, squirming, tensing, or showing other signs of distress, and not showing a quiet, alert, or sleeping state, then we know they're not really consoled. The next step in documentation would be to choose how much consoling support the baby needed. And we would choose either number one, two, or three. One is if the baby consoles on their own. Number two is if we are able to console the baby within 10 minutes by our comfort measures. Number three would be if it takes more than 10 minutes to calm the baby down or if the baby can't stay consoled for at least 10 minutes despite all of our interventions. So if we have to record number three, then we'll still continue to implement all of our comfort measures to the best that we can. But we will also be prompted to perform a parent caregiver huddle. And that's what we'll talk about next. A caregiver huddle is indicated any time that we had to document yes for an ESC item or a three for consoling support needed. And basically what this just means is that the nurse or the provider and the parent will get together and we'll just discuss is there any way we can optimize the comfort measures we've been giving. 
Is there any way we can improve feeding? Can we change the infant's environment? Maybe move their bed to a quieter area of the NICU? Or have someone who could come in and help out the parents with cares? We would talk about making sure we could do what the baby really needed to be comforted the most. And our goal for an outcome for this parent caregiver huddle is to explore ways to optimize these non-farm care interventions and optimize feedings. Let's take a couple minutes now to review these non-pharmacological interventions or comfort measures that we do to try to help babies in withdrawal. Notice the subscription here says, the first line treatment for infants with opioid exposure. And really, that is so true. The first thing we want to do is to help this baby is to give all these comfort measures that we've been talking about. Well, what are those comfort measures? Here we see a list of very familiar interventions that we use often, such as keeping the babe parents with the baby, skin to skin. Babies are so comforted by that. Holding, gentle rocking, swaying. Volunteers coming in. It talks about safe swaddling. Babies like that tight swaddle. It makes them feel cozy and they feel their boundaries and they feel safe. We've talked about feeding them early rather than waiting until they've lost their behavioral state. And then low lighting, quiet environment, giving them the pacifier because they have that need to suck, making sure parents have the help they need, limiting visitors, not having a lot of commotion around the bedside, clustering cares, and making sure the parents have what they need. Research has shown that keeping babies skin to skin promotes neurobehavioral organization. So that would definitely help babies in withdrawal. Also, we need to note that breastfeeding is encouraged if the moms are in compliance with the treatment program so that that makes it a safe provision for the baby. Some tools that we have or some positioning aids that we can use are sleep sacks, stretchy blankets, cozy cubs, facilitated tucking, massage, and swaddle baths. Those will all add to the comfort for the baby. And a caution we want to mention is that when parents are holding the baby, we want to make sure that they are fully awake. If they're sleepy, they shouldn't. I mean, they should put the baby down in the bassinet or ask another caregiver or, or the other parent to help with the baby. And we want to encourage parents to take a nap, even if it's a short nap, just a short one, when their baby is sleeping so that they can be refreshed and they can give the baby the care that it needs when the baby wakes up. Also, we do want to acknowledge that the infant's symptoms and in fact, the whole hospitalization might be very stressful to the parents. And it will be challenging because the baby will need to be held a lot of the time to stay calm. So we can let them know that it's okay if they need to take a little break every now and then. But what if we feel like we've done everything we could? We've maximized all those non-pharmacological interventions. We've done everything we could to make it so the baby could be comfortable, could eat, could sleep, and it's just not working. We perform our assessment and we're still getting a yes on ESC items or a three for consoling support needed. Then it's time to go to the next step, which is a full care team huddle. The goal of a full care team huddle is to consider all the possible etiologies for symptoms, reassess if NPIs are maximized, and determine if medication treatment is needed. So this huddle would include the parent ideally, the bedside nurse, the physician, and also the pharmacist when they're available. 
And then we will decide together as a team if the baby needs to start getting an opioid replacement medication. And even if we do start a medication, we want to continue to maximize all those comfort measures we have been giving up to this point. Here is a screenshot of what nursing documentation in Cerner will look like. There are two sections in iView. First is the NOWS NAS assessment. And if we document that signs of withdrawal are present, we will fill in the additional information below that. The second section is titled Eat, Sleep, Console. This is where we document the results of our ESC care assessment we are performing every two to four hours with our patient. And also, we document whether or not we performed a huddle. The terms in blue on this section, these sections, have the appropriate guidance and reference texts attached to the ESC care tool. So that means all we have to do is click on the blue, and then we'll be able to see expanded instructions on how to properly assess these different criteria that are listed here. So we've decided baby needs some medication assistance. Now let's discuss pharmacologic management. How do we initiate medication and how do we wean a baby off of opioid medication? At ANMC, the primary medication we use is methadone. Our initial goal in medication therapy is stabilization. And stabilization of the patient is defined as no or few yes responses on that ESC care tool over the last 24 hours without having to adjust a methadone dose. We might consider just giving one PRN dose of methadone to start with. There's some evidence that an isolated dose might be sufficient to control symptoms for some patients in combination with optimized non-pharmacological care. We will coordinate closely with pharmacy because they are the ones who will calculate the rate we will escalate or modify or wean the dosages of methadone. So this shows that it's very important that we as nurses communicate with the doctors and with pharmacy about how the baby is doing so that they will be able to give the best advice and make the best decisions on what doses and how often to give the methadone to the baby. Some second-line pharmacological agents that can be used to treat opioid withdrawal are phenobarbital or clonidine, especially if co-exposures are present. But these should be used infrequently according to the AAP. The best success to treat opioid withdrawal is with opioids. So that's what we do at ANMC with the methadone treatment. And as is brought out here on this slide, ESC assessments should continue for 24 to 48 hours following completion of the methadone taper, just to make sure that the baby is stable completely off medication. Now let's go over a few case studies together. Case study number one. You are caring for a two-day-old full-term infant with prenatal methadone exposure. You are doing the 12 a.m. assessment on the ESC tool. The mother is rooming in with the infant with low environmental stimulation and frequent skin-to-skin -skin contact. The infant is exclusively breastfeeding with a good latch, having fed 10 times in the last 24 hours. The infant's weight is down 2% from birth weight. The infant slept well during the day. However, over the last past four hour period, he slept for only one hour after a feeding, getting up frequently to cluster feed. The infant quickly falls asleep after each breastfeeding session. While awake, the infant consoles consistently with caregiver support within three minutes, calming down with swaddling and a pacifier or feeding. Now I'll give you about a minute to look over these questions and decide how you would answer them.
Okay, let's review our answers. Question number one, the answer is B. Poor feeding due to NAS? No. The infant is breastfeeding 8 to 12 times a day with effective latch. Question number two. The answer is B. Sleep less than one hour after feeding due to NAS? No. The infant is cluster feeding, not exhibiting NAS symptoms related to sleep, such as fussiness, restlessness, or tremors. Question number three. The answer is B. Soothes with some support, or equal to two. The infant requires caregiver support of swaddling, use of a pacifier, and feeding, and soothes within three minutes. Question number four. The answer is B. Did the infant take greater than 10 minutes to console? No. The infant consoled within three minutes. Question number five. The answer is B. No team huddle is indicated. A team huddle is recommended if an infant has a yes response to any ESC item or if received three for su soothing support used to console the infant. Case study number two. You are caring for a two-day-old baby born at 41 weeks by vaginal delivery after a long induction. The mother has been stable on buprenorphine therapy for two years. This is her first baby, and there are lots of family and friends visiting on the first day. Now mom is on her own. In the past four hours, the mom was out of the room for one and a half hours to go outside to smoke and walk around. The baby went to the nursery while mom was outside. During the time, you observe the baby waking often due to increased startle reflex when other babies in the nursery were crying. Mom and baby are now back in the room. Just now, it took approximately 15 minutes of skin-to-skin -skin time and sucking on a finger to calm the baby down. The baby then breastfed well, is swaddled, and placed in the bassinet and falls asleep. The baby woke up soon after due to increased startle reflex, but then easily settles back down with a pacifier. All right, I'll give you another minute to look at these questions and then we'll go over them together. Okay, let's review. Question number one. The answer is B. For poor feeding due to NAS? No. The infant is stated to have breastfed well. Question number two. The answer is A. Sleeps less than one hour after feeding due to NAS? Yes. The infant is noted to be waking frequently due to increased startle reflex. Question three. The answer is C. Soothes with great support, equal to three. The infant took greater than 10 minutes to soothe, which gives the baby a three rating automatically. Question four, the answer is A. The infant took greater than 10 minutes to console. Yes, it took approximately 15 minutes of skin to skin time and sucking on a finger to calm down. Question number five, the answer is A. A team huddle should be considered, yes. A team huddle is recommended if an infant has a yes response to any ESC item or if they received three for soothing support. Question number six. The answer is A. Reinforce non-pharmacologic care. Medication treatment should be considered if non-pharmacological care is not helping the infant. The caregiver should be educated on the importance of skin-to-skin -skin time 
and the assessment of the infant's environment should be done since he is waking frequently in response to the noise in the nursery and may benefit from staying in mom's calm, quiet room with her. Now let's discuss case study number three. You are caring for a three-day-old healthy baby born of, at full term. The mother has been stable on methadone for two years. She is also on Zoloft for depression. The baby is jittery with high tone and poor feeding on the first day, but is now doing better on the second day of life. The mother is keeping the baby with her all the time in a quiet, calm room spending a lot of time holding skin to skin. Since the last assessment, the baby fed well and slept for two hours after a feeding. The baby was fussy when he woke up and had high muscle tone and tremors during his diaper change. He calmed down after two minutes of skin to skin with mom. The baby gets fussy when put down in the bassinet, but quickly consoles when picked up. Okay, we'll discuss this again in one minute. Now let's go ahead and review. Question number one, the answer is B. Poor feeding due to NAS? No, the infant is feeding well. Question number two, the answer is B. Sleep less than one hour after feeding due to NAS? No, the infant slept for two hours after feeding. Question three, the answer is B. Soothes with some support, equal to two. The infant required some support, including skin to skin time. Question number four, the answer is B. Did the infant take greater than 10 minutes to console? No. The infant calmed after two minutes of skin to skin time. Question number five, the answer is B. Is a team huddle indicated? No. A team huddle is recommended if an infant has a yes response to any ESC item or if they received a three for consoling support needed. We've included in this presentation a list of content experts at the Alaska Native Medical Center. You may contact us for more information if you like. We're available to help with training questions regarding implementation of ESC in your clinical practice. Also, you may contact your unit manager for additional resources. They might be able to connect you with additional subject matter experts or super users. We wish you success and we wish you happy babies. The content for this presentation has been used by the Alaska Native Medical Center with permission from Boston Medical Center, Dr. Matthew Grossman, and the Children's Hospital at Dartmouth-Hitchcock.